Hello everyone, Nate the Great Reviews is back with another quick review. I just wanted to give a quick shout out to Hidden Geek Village. He just gave me a shout out on his channel. And he also does podcasts and trailer reactions. And he just released his first movie review and is really in depth and is a really good breakdown. So please go check out Hidden Geek Village. And hit that subscribe button and hit that notification bell and please watch his content because he's really good at what he does. So I saw No Way Home for the second time last night and I kind of wanted to give a give it another shot. First time I saw it, I wasn't really fair with it and I was pretty, I actually wasn't in the best mood when I watched the movie and I was kind of looking for shit to, you know, nitpick. So I really, really didn't enjoy it the first time I saw it. There was definitely aspects I liked, but seeing it a second time, being in a better state of mind, I just enjoyed the movie so much more. Fucking a hundred times more. I'm so happy I went and just watched it again. I could actually relax and sit down and just watch it and not have my thoughts get in the way. Um, I'm going to get the complaints out of the way because there's a couple of complaints I still have about the movie. For first, I still hate the fact that this all happened just because Peter Parker was a fucking idiot and he wouldn't shut his mouth when Doctor Strange was casting a spell. Even though Doctor Strange tells Peter, you know, shut up, you're ruining the spell. And Peter just keeps going and going and going. First time I saw that, I thought it was stupid. Second time I saw it, I thought it was even more stupid. And when I saw it in the trailer before I even saw the movie, I was like, is this really how all the villains are going to get brought in? Just Peter, you know, making his own mistake and he has to fix it. Sure enough, that's what happens. But at the end of the day, that's the character of Spider-Man. He lives and he learns and he's like a normal human being just like the rest of us and that what makes him so relatable i just thought the way they did in the movie was kind of just redundant and they could have made a better plot as to why all these villains got brought into our universe um another complaint i still think the pacing at the first half of the movie up until the bridge fight with doc ock is not as terrible as i thought as first viewing <laughs> But every single scene is literally ripped right out of the trailer. So the first act of the movie up until that bridge scene, I'm just waiting for scenes that I haven't seen in the fucking trailer yet. And that obviously didn't change the second time I watched it, right? That still bugged me a bit. I'm like, you guys showed all of the... You guys showed so many trailers, so many TV spots. Like, I've already seen all these scenes. So I was waiting for something new. So it takes a bit of time for the story to pick up. But all in all, it is worth it at the end. Because this is definitely the best the best version of Tom Holland that we get emotional-wise. The only other negative thing I have to say is I felt the death of Aunt May still, sh still sent shivers down my spine. Still got goosebumps from it, but I still didn't feel that connection to Aunt May like I did with Tobey Maguire or Andrew Garfield's Aunt May. This Aunt May was a lot more, you know, laid back and the emotional connection just wasn't really there. But the acting was so good in No Way Home, so when she does die, you do feel it because the acting is really good. But other than that, I don't really have any other complaints. It's just the first half of that movie. It showed way too much, so none of it is fresh in your mind when you're really watching it. Like, I've seen this in the trailer. Same as Doctor Strange, but that's for another video. Positives now. The relationship between Zendaya and Tom Holland, I bought into a lot more this time around. I don't know if it's because of social media and because they're dating in real life, but first two movies, I was not feeling the chemistry. Saw this movie again the first time. Didn't feel the chemistry. Saw it this time. It really, really... I 
I just gave it a more fair chance. I, I think they bounce off each other really good. Zendaya's character actually isn't as bad as I thought. I actually don't mind her. Um, most of the cameos for the most part are really, really well done. And there's just a... There's just a bit of nostalgia factor at the beginning to just keep you invested and keep going. And then Green Goblin shows up. And I think they just handle everything so well. I love how Green Goblin... At first I didn't like it. But second viewing I liked it. I love when Green Goblin just comes on the bridge. And you only see him for two seconds. And then he goes away. I fucking hated that the first time. But it made so much more sense. Obviously they gotta build up to it. And they can't just throw goblin in like right away right because they should be stupid uh the lizard was all right not my favorite my favorite i'm stuck between green goblin obviously and i just i really wish sandman was in this more but man alfred don't get me wrong william defoe stole the fucking show don't get me wrong he always does he beat alfred molina in this one but alfred molina man he is just so fucking good as Doc Ock. You cannot replace him. His facial expressions, just like William Defoe, he is on another acting level than this. And I love the intensity he brings. And it, it's it's not a different Doc Ock. It's the same one you know. But he's just such an asshole until Peter puts that chip in his neck. Which is another complaint I didn't like. I didn't like that part when Peter brings him into the house and he's trying to be, you know, he's trying to save them. I'm like, this is stupid. He should be fucking, you know, beating the shit out of them. Like, come on, man. Like, after all this, like, but then I thought about it. No. Spider-Man is here to help people. He's not, you know, he's not a killer. So, the motivations really spoke to me a lot more the second time around. I hated the first viewing. I hated it how his plan was to help everyone and send them back through the universe so they wouldn't get hurt. No, I wanted them to I wanted them to die, but Spider-Man isn't like that. And it just that didn't click with me, but the second viewing it did, and I appreciated it a lot more. It builds the character of Spider-Man a lot more. And it shows that he's just willing to help people. He's he does not wanna kill anyone. Unless you kill Aunt May, and then he's gonna, you know try to kill you at the end with the goblin glider but uh all in all i really really enjoyed that scene more when they're at the house and they're all just you know shooting the shit first time i saw it i was like man this is going on too long the second time it just made a lot more sense and why they were doing it but uh the ending fight definitely hands down the best fight in probably the mcu i think I almost cried when Andrew just looked at everyone. I love you guys. And he just started hugging them. Or Toby when he's cracking his back. Like That whole ending climax. The first time I saw it. I liked it. But I didn't enjoy it as much. Because I felt like it went on too long. Special effects were bothering me here. I didn't let that get in the way. And it was just such a good time. And I had to keep telling myself. Like you're never going to see this again. You are never going to see Tom Holland, Andrew Garfield, and Tobey Maguire on screen together ever again. And if you do, then, I mean, it'll take away the magic in No Way Home. But Andrew Garfield just brings this broness to him and this sense of... He's... You can tell that he's been alone for so long and he's so lonely and he just wants to bond with someone so bad. And it was just... Sometimes you can relate to that, so it was just... His acting was just on another fucking level. Toby was my favorite cameo. But acting wise. Andrew Garfield was hands down. He got more of the emotional scenes. Even the first time I saw it. He was he was the standout for me. But the way they all bounce off each other. The way Peter tells. like The way how they all explain. How they all produce web fluid. Or Toby Maguire is the only one that can produce web fluid. <laughs> Tom Holland has a suit. Andrew Garfield had to make his own gadgets. Like, it just shows how they're all similar, but they're so different. How they all lost someone 
Tom Holland's, when you think about it, the only one who hasn't had an Uncle Ben, but he lost me. But Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield, they had their Aunt May, but they lost their Uncle Ben, so they can all relate to each other, and they have a really, really nice heart-to-heart -heart moment. I wish it went on just a minute longer, like a minute longer. Like, I just, I felt so invested, and the scene just felt like it ended. But really great cameos, J. Jonah Jameson. I, I guess Mysterio's dead. I don't know what's going on with that. I thought he was going to be in this, and then I thought they were going to turn into like a Sinister Six kind of thing, but that didn't happen. I also thought the part, I didn't catch this the first time when Doctor Strange is telling Peter, like, the multiverse is breaking, and everyone's coming in, and before I was thinking to myself, I'm like, everyone? But like, everyone? Like, everyone? <laughs> like, everyone. Like, Venom. Like, everyone. Craven. Like, everyone? <laughs> so, like... That just opens the door and just shows you how much they could just bring into the MCU right away. How much shit Marvel has right now on their hands owning X-Men. They can just bring whoever the fuck they want in. Another really good thing about this movie. I think it just knocks it out of the park when it comes to emotion. Compared to the first two Tom Holland movies. Completely different than Tobey Maguire. Those movies, those movies have like a warm, cozy feel to them, you know what I mean? When you were in Aunt May's house, Aunt May felt like that cozy grandma. Here, it feels more modern, and they still do a really good job of hooking you in emotionally, and it's definitely the best from, out of Homecoming and Far From Home, No Way Home was hands down the best emotionally. Love, I love how Peter goes into the coffee shop and like MJ just doesn't remember him and you're just man I almost started crying not even because it's not even because she didn't remember him but just like be, like they wouldn't have that relationship I almost started crying because like it's like fuck man like no one knows who you are no one the one person that loved you is gone Aunt May is gone and MJ was the only one who loved you that was still alive, and she doesn't even know you. Ned was only your only friend, and he doesn't even know you. So it's just like, fuck, did you really deserve all of this? Like, it, you're just a kid trying to make everything better, you didn't know. But they, they did such a good job with that, man. I think, and, and Ned, 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 emotionally, Ned, near the end, Ned, Ned grew on me, actually. They really give that guy some credit where it's due. Like, sure, he gets annoying. He's that one Marvel joke character. Throws in a joke when everything's serious, so kind of kills the vibe sometimes. But I don't know, man. Ned grew on me a bit. I think it's pretty crazy that he has some sort of power. I think they'll do something with that. I know in the comic books that he turns into some villain. or I don't know if he turns into the go Hobgoblin, but he turns into a villain. I know that much. But all in all, great movie, great ending, great final swing. I, I just love how he just puts the costume on and he just goes back out and he's like, fuck it. I'm just in the neighborhood Spider-Man. I gotta start all over again. And then the movie ends. If we get another Tom Holland movie, I don't know if we will. I have no idea what's going on. But if we do, I do not want them redoing everything. You know, so everyone remembers Spider-Man later on. No, he has to start from scratch and work his way back up. No Avengers, no Iron Man, nothing. No help at all. So that ending was just really emotional. This movie hit me emotionally a lot more than I thought it would the second viewing. It definitely didn't hit me at all the first viewing. I just wish that first act up until the train scene was better paced and structured scene wise so it's not 30 scenes you've already seen in the trailer but other than that man pretty good movie not the best spider-man movie i'm telling you right now he's not my favorite spider-man but tom holland's acting has gotten a lot better i liked him in uncharted he grew on me and i'm just curious where they're going to take this character next i just 
really happy that I gave this movie another chance. And it's 50-50. It doesn't really feel like a movie movie like the Batman is going to be. There's still, no matter how many times I watch this movie, it's going to be a bit, bit like Endgame. It, Endgame felt more like a movie than fan service, but this felt like more fan service than, you know, the movie, like an actual movie. I think if they focus on a bit more of the actual, you know, story instead of the cameos, it would have been a bit better, but all in all, still great cameos. I don't know why Jamie Foxx gets bashed so hard. I think he's fine as Electro. So, thank you everyone for watching. Again, please, for the second time, go check out Hidden Geek Village. Very, very good trailer reactions. And he dropped his Uncharted review. So, go watch that now. Thank you everyone for watching.